Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting edition here at the Manga Geekdom. Today we're going to go over the top 12 most anticipated manga releases for the month of September. Let's do it. As always, let me remind you that dates are subject to change, and the purpose of this video is to highlight all the volume ones that are coming out, the deluxe editions or box sets, stuff like that. Kind of hard to recommend a volume 20 of a series if you catch my drift. So with that out of the way, First one here is Blade of the Moon Princess Volume 1. This is being published by Viz Media and it is written and drawn by Tatsuya Endo, the same creator as Tista and a little known manga called Spy X Family. Defiant and vulgar Princess Kaguya Takenouchi is not the heir to the moon's silver court that her mother's retainers had hoped for. But when the Empress falls ill during a wave of terrorist attacks, Kaguya resolves to do right by her people and rise to the occasion. Unfortunately, Kaguya's enemies are a step ahead of her, and she ends up ejected from the moon and stranded on the primitive, tainted world below. Can she find her way back to the moon and reclaim the throne that is rightfully hers from the usurpers? This has my name written all over it. I can't wait. I've been interested in this series ever since it was announced uh, back in one of those Viz solicitation days. I have to admit, I haven't read it before, but I like the mix of classical Japanese folklore and of course sci-fi and all that fun stuff. It's going to be a short read, only five volumes total, so it's not a huge commitment on your your shelf. Next up, probably one of my hypest releases of September overall. This is Soada and the House of Monsters, Volume 1. This is being published by Seven Seas Entertainment. This fantasy adventure slice of life series is written and drawn by Hidenori Yamaji. Soada is a young orphan girl who was raised by knights and trained to fight against marauding monsters. By the time Soada is old enough to join the fray, her blade is no longer needed, as peace has been declared with monsters. Searching for a new calling, Sawada stumbles upon Kirik, the dwarf, architect of the monster world. Suddenly, instead of fighting monsters, Sawada finds herself working alongside Kirik to build comfortable homes for monster kind. In the course of her new career, will Sawada find a home for herself? This is a mashup of cool ideas that I love. I dig the whole aspect that peacetime is here and you have a character that was brought up with the idea that she had to participate and fight and contribute to this ongoing conflict, but now that it's been resolved, what do you do with your life? Well, you find a new lease on it, and you team up with a dwarf, and you start house building for monsters. I love how it looks, I love the art and aesthetic, can't wait to bring you my thoughts on this series. The Darwin Incident, Volume 1, published by Kodansha. This action sci-fi series has been highly requested for a long time by sci-fi fans. This is a manga written by Shun Umezawa, drawn as well. Created in a biological science lab, Charlie is a half-human, half-chimpanzee hybrid known as a human Z. Raised by his adoptive human parents, Charlie is now 15 and starting high school. There he meets Lucy, a clever loner who becomes his first ever friend. But his normal life is shattered when the animal rights extremist who freed his mother from the lab 15 years ago re-emerge as terrorists bent on kidnapping Charlie at all costs. I know this is going to be a hot take for sure. I'm not necessarily in love with the idea of a human Z and the look of Charlie unfortunately uh, kind of freaks me out a little bit. Is that racist towards chimpanzee hybrids with humans? Probably. I do apologize in advance to our friend Charlie here, but I do know this sci-fi series has a cult following. It is an interesting subject. Obviously, mature themes are going to be explored with the treatment of animals, humans, of lower class citizens, and stuff like that. So I am very much looking forward to checking this one out as soon as I can. The Moon on a Rainy Night, Volume 1, also being published by Kodansha. This is a drama romance GL written and drawn by Kuzushiro. One rainy night, Saki is rushing to a piano lesson when she crashes into a beautiful long-haired girl, dropping her sheet music in the process. Saki stutters an apology, but the girl simply hands back her sheet music and leaves without a word. Saki begins her first day of high school the following morning, only to find the stranger from the night before sitting in the desk 
desk next to hers. She learns that the girl's name is Kanon and that she is not quite completely deaf, but very hard of hearing. Though Kanon needs to be close to people to read their lips, she tends to push people away with her icy demeanor. Through one kind gesture, Saki slowly begins breaking down the walls around Kanon, even as she feels something new blossoming within her. Not only does it sound like a very interesting romance drama series, I like the fact that we have a character with a disability taking center stage. We really don't see that often and I am all here for that. Super excited for this series. Hopefully I can get to it soon and bring in my thoughts on it as well. Stitch and the Samurai, the complete collection, omnibus edition, hardcover. There is a soft cover edition also coming out, but between the two, come on, you, you gotta grab the hardcover, man. This is being published by Tokyo Pop. This sci-fi comedy series is written and drawn by the late Hiroto Wada. While fleeing the Galactic Federation, Stitch's spaceship malfunctions and he makes an emergency landing, not in Hawaii, but in Sengoku era, Japan. Discovered by the brutal warlord Lord Yamato and his clan, Stitch's incomparable cuteness is no match for the battle-weary samurai who decides to bring the blue tanuki home with him. Will Stitch's love of chaos turn into a formidable advantage for the samurai's influence, or will his cute and fluffy form disarm the noble lord's stern facade? Unfortunately, the creator for this series passed away, but his legacy lives on in this original mashup. You got a Disney character mixed up with Japanese Japanese folklore and historical fiction, if you will. Stitch happens to be one of my favorite modern Disney characters. I love the idea that he is confused for a tanuki. He just happens to be blue. I can't wait to have the entire series collected here in one omnibus edition. I neglected to pick up the standard releases, so I will happily get this instead. I am seriously really excited to pick up Stitch and the Samurai. If you love Stitch and you want to see more stuff like this, uh, go support this release from Tokyo Pop. Here we have Stray Cat and Wolf Volume 1. This is written and drawn by Mitsubachi Miyuki. This is being put out by Yen Press, and this romance series follows the character of Tamaki, who leaves her village to attend high school in the capital. Although she had intended to live alone, when she's offered a place at a stranger's apartment after collapsing in the street, well, did she mention he's pretty hot? Vague plot descriptions aside, this is a romance series by Yen Press, so you know this is going to sell extremely well. And if you're in the mood for such a thing, we got you with Stray Cat and Wolf. This next book is probably the highlight for all the manga tubers that cover September releases, I guess. DRCL, or Dracula if we're feeling fancy, Midnight Children, Volume 1. This is a hardcover, and I keep thinking this is a Dark Horse release just because of the dark tones of it and the overall style, but no. This is being put out by Viz Media. This horror supernatural series is written and drawn by Shinichi Sakamoto. This is a beautiful and horrific retelling of Bram Stoker's quintessential classic in the horror genre. Of course, I'm talking about Dracula. The art on this thing just looks absolutely beautiful. I'm not necessarily a big fan of horror, but I do love creature horror, if that is a thing. You know what I mean? When we follow vampires, zombies, werewolves, monsters, aliens, etc. That stuff I do love, and I cannot wait to add DRCL to my library. Also kind of funny that the retail price for this is just $27. No sense. I thought that was pretty peculiar. But I do recommend this even if you don't care about vampires or Dracula. Just on the artistic merit alone from Shinichi Sakamoto, this is a worthy addition to your library. Maiden of the Needle, Volume 1, published by Yen Press. This fantasy series is written by Zeroki with art by Yuni Yukimura. Yui was reincarnated into another world as a member of the noble Nuer family. But when it appears she failed to inherit her family's unique enchanted tailoring gifts, the young seamstress is in for a life of torment and misfortune. Will a meeting with a kind-hearted noble be enough to change her fate? This sounds like a fantastical, no pun intended, isekai series that looks pretty cool. I enjoyed the art and I think you'll dig this series as well if you're into fantasy series and isekai. 
The Do-Over Damsel Conquers the Dragon Emperor, Volume 1. This is published by Yen Press, an action comedy romance series written by Sarasa Nagase and art by Anko Yuzu and Mitsuya Fuji. Although Jill's engagement to the Crown Prince should have guaranteed her a happy life, she is instead sentenced to death by her very fiancé. However, moments before her death, she is sent back in time to the party that determined her fate. In a desperate bid to avoid her doom, she proposes to the man behind her, but that man turns out to be none other than an enemy from a neighboring country, the Dragon Emperor himself, Hades. I'm looking forward to this. I like the whole idea, I like the premise, and the art is actually pretty cool. Next up from Shima Shinya, we're getting Glitch Volume 1, published by Yen Press. This drama mystery series follows Minato, who notices something strange about their new town on their very first day of school, when they witness an eerie shadow. Together with their little sister, Akira, and their new friends, they set out to investigate what's behind the bizarre visions plaguing them. Shima Shinya has such a unique art style that is a blend of things that we all love from Euro comics, Western comics, and of course manga. I am very much looking forward to their work here. Sounds really cool. Highly recommend you check out Glitch as well. The Ephemeral Scenes of Setsuna's Journey, Volume 1, also published by Yen Press. This fantasy adventure series is written by Rokusyo Usasagi and art by Ken Terasato and Sime. I hope I pronounced those names correctly. Setsuna Sugimoto's life is forever changed when he's summoned to another world to be a hero. Changed for the worse, that is, as he's quickly tossed aside because of his weak constitution. Fortunately, a former hero named Kyle gives Setsuna another chance at life by passing on his knowledge and strength. Thus, Setsuna embarks on a journey to experience this incredible new world. Sounds like a good mix of isekai with wish fulfillment, strength, and empowerment. I do like the art on this, which was the main appeal when I was making this video and noticed the ephemeral scenes of Setsuna's journey. So yeah, check it out if you can. We're going to close out the video with a box set release, and it comes out on my birthday. That is, of course, the Chainsaw Man box set from Tatsuki Fujimoto. You get the first 11 volumes of the series and an exclusive double-sided full-color poster. Honestly, if you're watching this video, you know about Chainsaw Man. Odds are you read the manga or watched the anime adaptation, so it's no surprise that this would get a box set. It was a long time coming, and here it is. I do like that it's not as wide as other Viz Media box sets. This one seems to be a little bit taller, and I'm actually picking this up. I usually have a beef with box sets. I'm not a fan of them. I think for the price and the extra content, I don't think it's worth it, except for when you just want the whole thing, or you have the income for it, which is perfectly fine, or you want to save some space. That's always good too. But for this, I was able to acquire the pre order for a really, really low discounted price. So I wasn't going to say no to that. And I actually like Chainsaw Man. I read it on the Viz Media app, really enjoyed it when it came out. And uh, now I can own it physically. So there you go. Chainsaw Man happens to be, I guess, my uh, birthday gift to myself. I'm treating myself with some chaos and mayhem at the hands of Tatsuki Fujimoto. So there you go guys, 12 manga recommendations here for the month of September, or what I think are the most anticipated ones that people can check out. New series, stuff like that. Thank you everybody for tuning in, thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing to the channel. I truly do appreciate it, it means the world to me, thank you so much. Let me know in the comment section what you thought of the video, what are some of your most anticipated books that are coming out this month? Very interested in finding out as well. So that's going to be it. God bless. Stay safe out there. I will catch all of you on our next video.